at the outset <coughs> i would like to thank uh, dr bansi sabu and his team for inviting me to deliver this prestigious dr shaniksha memorial lecture dr shaniksha was also my great friend i first met with uh, late dr siddharth bhai shah and i also participated in the hypertension society of india meeting which was organized by him at ahmedabad i have been interested can i have the first slide please i have been interested in cardio diabetology and cardio metabolic medicine for the last 25 years or so we published the first book on cardio diabetology in api kathmandu in 1996 and following this we have published five more books but dr bansi sabu always likes to have deliberation on newer and newer topics so today i am not going to talk on cardio diabetology or cardio metabolic medicine the topic which i have selected today is a new one i am sure none of you would have heard on this that is liver emerging as a big playground for cardio metabolic therapeutics all of us know cardio metabolic diseases are rocking the entire world and are important contributors to cardiovascular morbidity and mortality the peculiar feature of cardio metabolic diseases is they often conglomerate in the same patient so it's not uncommon to have obesity diabetes mfld ost and other diseases in the same patient the most important thing is that the commonest cause of mortality in cardiac metabolic diseases is acvd particularly acute myocardial infarction and it is the desire of all of us not even patients that our heart should beat without blockages and time and again every day we see scores of patient asking us do i have blockages in our coronary artery what could be the simplest approach to achieve this goal i'll be talking to you in a couple of minutes lipid management plays a very important role in reduction of cardiovascular event but curiously enough all drugs rather most of the drugs which decrease cardiovascular events their site of action is not in the heart their site of action is not in the arteries the site of action is in the liver and liver is emerging as a big playground for cardio metabolic therapeutics which i will be alluding to most of the lipid modulating drugs their site of action is in the liver liver is an important site for fat accumulation and you cannot manage diabetes optimally without focusing on the liver and some anti diabetic medications also execute their glycemic action through the liver and they have other benefits on the liver so when we look at the lipid modulating drugs what do we see statins which are the foundational drugs for lipid management their site of action is in liver and not in the cardiovascular system they inhibit the synthesis of cholesterol in the liver fibrates which decrease triglycerides they inhibit the synthesis of uh, triglycerides in the liver bambodoic acid which is a new blockbuster for additional lowering of uh, ldl cholesterol in patients with acvd or hefh it also acts in the liver and inhibits the synthesis of cholesterol ahead of statins pcsk9 monoclonal antibodies which are the magic bullet for decreasing ldl cholesterol the site of action is in the liver in glycerin which melts cholesterol from the vessel wall the site of action is in the liver it inhibits synthesis of cholesterol uh, pcsk9 in the liver lomipetide a drug for familial hypercholesteremia also acts in the liver is an mttp inhibitor and blocks the transfer of triglycerides to apob mepomarsin which again is an antisense to apob acts on the liver 
Pelakarsan, which is likely to emerge out as a transformational therapy for LPA therapeutics induced cardiovascular disease. It also acts on the liver. The antisense to APOA decreases the synthesis of APOA and therefore LPA. Even acumen, which is a boon for homozygous uh, familial hypercholesteremia, also acts on the liver, is an NGPLT inhibitor. And the beauty of this molecule is its action is independent of the density of functioning LDL receptors. PCSK9 monoclonal antibodies do not produce the appropriate response in HOFH, but this is independent and therefore is a boon for homozygous hybrid. Gene editing, which is now coming in a real existence, is becoming a real reality. The site of action, the modulation is in the liver, and liver transplantation has been done in the past. And now in the USA and other countries, fatty liver or NFLD is the commonest cause for liver transplantation. So you cannot ignore when we talk of cardiometabolic therapeutics in liver. Cardiodiapology now is a well-developed specialty, but it seems that in times to come, we will be forced to create this new subspecialty of uh, diabetes that is cardiohepatology, because everything is mediated via the liver. So why we are so much concerned about lipids? The first reason is cholesterol never, never sleeps. It works 24 into 7 and executes its ravages on the cardiovascular system in terms of formation of plaque. And all of us know plaques are the major culprits for CVD. They put at risk of heart attack and stroke. Stroke, heart attack is the number one cause of death, and stroke is the number one cause of disability. The second reason why we are so much bothered about lipid management is that during the last quarter of century, lipids management has reached great strides. And what are these? When we look at the issue, can we stabilize the plaque by lowering LDL? The answer is a big yes, and we have data from several statin trials. When we look at the issue, can we reduce the plaque buildup by lowering LDL? Answer is again universally yes. That is, we can arrest the progression of atherosclerosis and reversal trial is a beautiful example. High intensity that always statin showed that the progress of atherosclerosis can be arrested. And the third issue, where can we shrink the plaque by LDL lowering, which means can we achieve regression of atherosclerosis? Answer again is a big yes. And the Glogov trial is a staring example. When you lower LDL cholesterol to 65, it results in the rest of progression of atherosclerosis. When you lower it to 50, it results in regression of atherosclerosis. And can we make the plaque disappear by loading LDL? This is obviously an unresolved issue at the present state of time. Maybe this may be fulfilled in the future. So as a consequence of all this research in lipid management during the last quarter of century, a very dic uh, dicta has emerged that if you want to live without CVD for 100 years, keep your LDL less than 70 throughout your life, which means after 20s or 30s, and many luminaries in the cardiology who are in 90s are having their LDL 35, 40, 36, and so on. So one of the simplest way to achieve longevity of life, free of OECD, persistent, it has to persistently keep your low, and one of my great uh, globally renowned uh, uh, hepatologist, when I was talking about this, said if you maintain your SGPT, SGUT within normal, you can also live for 100 years because if the liver remains healthy, the cardiovascular system is healthy. There's a close cross connect between liver and the cardiovascular system. So messages are very clear, only it is to be followed if you want to get rid of these deadly diseases. Statins, all of us know, it inhibits synthesis of cholesterol in the liver by blocking the HMG coenzyme A reductase. It is the foundational therapy for lipid management. All of us are aware of it. But just to replicate, it improves endothelial function, delipidates the plaque. You can see on a vascular MRI or near infrared spectroscopy data from the yellow trial. 
it also has an anti-inflammatory action, can pacify these hot plaques which are seen on a PET CT, promotes calcification of the plaque, lot of pleiotropic effects, but what is not widely publicized, it, it also decreases thrombogenicity of the blood. One out of ten plaque only plaque rupture culminate into an acute coronary event. So it is the thrombogenicity of blood at the time of plaque rupture which is important. If you are on statin at the time of plaque rupture, the probability of a plaque rupture culminating into an acute coronary event can be minimized. And they have a legacy effect beautifully shown by the Voskevs and the other trials. Bampedoic acid is a new blockbuster for additional lowering of LDL in patients with ASCVD who has not achieved their goals or for uh, uh, HEFH. And these are the four clear trials. Whenever you have a clear, be assured that this is a bampedoic acid trial. And uh, again, the site of action is in the liver. It's a poor drug. It gets activated by ACVL1, as you can see. And this enzyme is not present in the skeletal muscle, and this is the reason why there is no muscle toxicity. It inhibits the enzyme ACL ahead of the statins, as you can see on your left. ACL means adenosine triphosphate citrate lysis and inhibits the synthesis of cholesterol. These are the four landmark trials, and all of you are aware of it. And each trial has substantial number of diabetic uh, patients, so this also applies to the diabetic population. LDL reduction with bampardic acid, very easy to remember. If you are using on top of statins, because statins also act to the same pathway, it is 15% reduction plus minus 2. So you'll see all the trials. If you are using statin intolerant patients, that is without statin, it will be 25 plus minus 2. And if you are using in absence of statin, bampedoic acid plus, it will be 35. So it's very simple, 15, 25, and 35. And most of the trials, as you can see, show this dicta. The additional advantage of uh, bampedoic acid is also decreases high sensitivity CRP and therefore has an anti-inflammatory action which is beneficial and unlike statins this is not diabetogenic rather it decreases blood glucose and also has a tendency to decrease weight. The only side effect being increase in the uric acid which can be easily taken care of by drugs. Why we say bampedoic acid may be a game changer for lipid management? because only 50% of patients with statin achieve their LDL goals. And if you use a triple combination, bampedoic acid, 180, zeptamide, 10, and et or even 20, a publication from Australia has very clearly shown that the triple combo can reduce LDL by 63%. And if you are following uh, the ACC guidelines for very high risk, 90% of LDL goal, 95% of patients achieve LDL goal less than 70. And if you are following the European, 58% achieve LDL goal less than 55. So triple combo is a great combo. In statin intolerant patients, never, never forget that some statin should be on board because statin has a lot of pleiotropic effects. And pitavestatin, and never forget in statin, is the easiest statin usually doesn't have a statin intolerant problem. So this triple combo again is a great combo for a statin intolerant patient. PCSK9 monoclonal antibodies, we know they are the magic bullets for lowering LDL. Uh, they also act on the liver. The normal function of PCSK9 is to get bind to these LDL yellow curly receptors so that if they get bind to these receptors, the receptor is taken inside their cells and this undergoes lysosomal de de degradation and cannot be recycled. But if you neutralize it with a PCSK9 monoclonal antibody, as you can see, the receptors are free to bind to the LDL particle. The particle is taken inside the liver and is cleared off and the receptor undergoes recycling and there's an increase in the number of LDL receptors. The reduction in LDL is phenomenal, 40 to 60% on top of anything, and they also decrease LPA. 
And this is translated to reduction in cardiovascular event. Four-year trial showing 15% reduction in the ischemic endpoint. Odyssey post ACS patient again 15% reduction in the ischemic endpoints. And we have a panoply of uh, PCSK9 trials in ACS, and we routinely use PCSK9 abolacumab to affordable patients, and this results in marked diminution in cardiovascular events. The dicta is if after an angioplasty you get recurrence of a cardiovascular event, the most common cause is your LDL has not been targeted to the appropriate level. In Clisran, again, is a beautiful drug. It again acts on the liver, inhibits synthesis of uh, PCSK9 in the liver, and melts cholesterol from the vessel walls. Approved in the United Kingdom, several countries, likely to be available in the near future. But the problem is its cost. And a single injection, 300 milligram, lowers LDL by 50%, and this remains there for the next six months. So one injection, 300 milligram in six months is the way to go. And that's why we say the beauty of Inclisran is unmatched. Two injections per year, but the cost is phenomenal. Again, Lomitide, which is for FH, also acts on the liver. It brings MTTP and prevents the transfer of uh, triangle size to APOB. So less VLDL means less LDL. Mepomarsin, which is also a drug for FH, also acts in the liver, is an anti-sense to ApoB and decreases LDL. And this is again Ivanacumab, a boon for uh, homozygous uh, FH, also acts on the liver, and it acts even when the uh, LDL receptors are not functioning, where PCSK9 does not act. All of us are aware of the reduced trials with icospentatile carried out in patients with CVD or diabetes with risk factors with hypertriglyceridemia 135 to 499. Great reduction in the ischemic endpoint, 25% in the primary endpoint, 26% in the secondary. But the problem is the benefit was seen even in triglyceride less than 150 clearly showing that lowering of triglyceride was not the mechanism of benefit in the reduced trial. There are several other mechanisms. Gene editing is emerging in a big way, and it seems that it is going to become a real reality in times to come. The first patient in New Zealand has already undergone a successful gene editing, a case of FH, and the HART1 trial with VERB 101 is already in progress, and the plan is to treat 40 patients with FH. Gene editing is a big stick because it's one and done, and you don't ever have to come back for treatment. So great uh, therapy, but we'll see how it goes in future. So when we look at the evolution of lipid-lowering therapies at the present state of time, we have statins, which are the foundational drugs used in all patients as first-line therapy. And we have various combinations, ezetimibe, icospentatal, bempedoic acid, fibrates. We have monthly or bimonthly therapies, evolacumab, which is available in India, evanacumab. We have weekly or monthly pelacarsin, which is emerging as uh, foundational or transformational therapy for LPA therapeutics, in run biannually, PCSK9 vaccine is also being tried once in a year, and if this becomes successful, a booster dose every year will be the new way to target atherosclerosis, and gene editing is going to come in a big way, but let's see what really happens in the future. Now, anti-diabetic medications also mediate their action via the liver, metformin, pioglutazone, SGLT2, GLP-1. All of us are aware of it that the uh, metformin targets insulin resistance at the level of liver uh, by decreased glucose output, also acts on the skeletal muscles. And SGLT2 inhibitors, which are the molecule of the decade, they also decrease insulin resistance, decrease inflammation, decrease FFA flux, and produce lots of benefit on the liver. 
and pioglitazone, which is again a time-testing molecule, a beautiful insulin sensitizers, also decreases liquid accumulation, decreases insulin sensitivity, and many other beneficial effects. It targets insulin resistance at the level of the adipocytes, also in also skeletal muscle. And GLP-1, again, receptor agonists, they also decrease glucose production, and as you can see, GLP-1 RA targets six of the eight components of the ominous octate and are wonderful drugs, only cost is prohibitive. So in summary, liver is emerging as a big playground for cardiometabolic therapeutics and I'm sure cardiohepatology is going to emerge in a big way as a new specialty of diabetes in times to come because you cannot manage or target diabetes without the help of the liver. Both are closely linked to each other. Most of the lipid modulating drugs for decreasing CV have their action on liver and not in the heart and or the artery. You can arrest progression of atherosclerosis by lowering LDL to 65 and achieve regression of atherosclerosis by lowering LDL to 50. And if you keep your LDL levels below 70 for most of the life after 20, 30, you can live up to 100 years free of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. There is a great cross-connect between diabetes and liver. FFLD increases diabetes, diabetes increases FFLD. Diabetes cannot be managed without focusing on the liver. In fact, some of the globally renowned hepatologists say that it is uh, MFLD which occurs first, that produces diabetes rather than diabetes producing uh, MFLD. And many anti-diabetic medications, metformin, pyoglitazone, SGLT2 inhibitor, GLP also acts on the liver. So thank you very much for the kind attention. And I'll again like to thank Dr. Bansi Sabu, who is a very versatile personality, and I'm uh, a great fan of his and his team. Thank you very much for your kind attention. <laughs>